So this is 5D chess, and I've been looking around at chess variants because I'm sort of working on one. Um, and I played a bunch on Steam before I remembered that this, that this existed, because this was quite a big deal when it came out. Um, and it sold super well, and it's got great reviews. And I finally got around to checking it out. It is, as you might imagine, complicated. <laughs> but I want to talk a bit about the, uh, the... There's a few ways in which it's unnecessarily difficult to learn. One of which is, look at this list. There's no fucking tutorial. There's a guide, which is just like text you've got to read. Uh, which is just, especially in this the case of this game, you need to be able to try the stuff while it's saying it. And then, you know, there's not even, I didn't see anything for playing against the AI, to me versus means against players, but you have to click that and actually then you can say CPU match and play against players. Train a week, okay, great, there's a nice weak AI to play against. Um, and then select variant, recommended standard. So if you're just trying to learn the game, this is what you do, right? Play this and you're playing a full game of chess. Now. I'm going to play a bit of this to show you like vaguely what the concept is, and it won't make any sense. <laughs> or like the, the broad concept might make sense, but the specifics will seem very weird. And then I'm going to play it how I think they should have started the game, um, and actually explain how it works, because it is kind of cool. Well, it's very cool. Um, it just has some extra wrinkles in it that I think make it needlessly complicated. Um, so playing a normal game of chess, the enemy has moved their knight. Pretty weird move for normal chess, it's a weak AI. Uh, I'll do just a fairly standard opening. Uh, then you have to, after you move, you have to submit your moves. So far, oh great, they gave us an example of, of <laughs> um, the game's weirdness right off the bat. So, their first move was a normal chess move, my first move was a normal chess move, and then they, at the, this is the earliest time you could possibly do this, they tr traveled their knight back in time. And there's lots of weird things about this. <laughs> first of all, putting a piece back in time, weird. Uh, second of all, it didn't go there, did it? It didn't end up on that board. It's not here. It hasn't ended up on this board. It's instead split off into a separate timeline. So this is one of the few like nice concrete rules you can cling to, is you can't change the past. Well, the board states that already exist will always exist. They'll never be altered. Um, these ones won't be. Uh, but you can branch new ones off from it. And the other weird thing that happened there is this thing branched off back then, and the, there's a big bar here that's just called the present. The present has moved back. It's kind of a weird term, because you'd think present always means now, but... Uh, the concept of now moves back when someone branches. So now there are two branches. And so why would you ever do this? Why did they do that? I mean, they were weak AI, so they might not have had a good reason. But the effect of it is, that the considerations to think about, is that in this this timeline, uh, he's lost that night. That night is gone. It left. It jumped in a time machine and it went to a different timeline. When it arrived back here, it branched off a new timeline, and of course its old self is there. Uh, so now they have three nights on this timeline. And the consideration to think about there is that the rules are, if you get checkmated on any timeline, you lose the game. So it's whoever can checkmate anyone in any timeline. So like one tactic is you could keep piling all your pieces into this same timeline. I think, I think, <laughs> I might need to check that, um, to make that timeline super strong and this one super weak. And as long as you don't get checkmated on this one, getting the checkmate with all those extra pieces would be easier here. So it's, then it's kind of a race of like this a very asymmetrical game. Um, that's almost the basics, but what I want you to notice here is that the knight moved to here, which a knight can't do. A knight can't move to there. It can't just move two places. That's to also go one in a different dimension. Um, and that will become relevant. Now, I want to see if I can move a piece into the past. Can I? Uh, I can't move that one into the past. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you why I can't do that. Like, I have some idea of... Oh, no, no, I do know why. Okay. Uh, I could move a knight into the past, because that's what he did. Oh, sorry. Uh... Maybe I can't move on this timeline at all? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I thought I understood this game better than I did. I, I can't even really click pieces here. Which suggests it's not my turn, but it is my turn. It's got a black highlight. Oh, I've selected this pawn. You can't unselect by clicking something else. That's the problem. Okay, yeah, okay. I do understand it. You get my time. Actually, that's what I wanted to say. Is <laughs> um, It is not clear. So the AI did it first. That didn't happen the first time we played this game. The AI just didn't travel in time. And I didn't know how to travel in time, so I just never did it. <laughs> like, the game just unfolded normally until very late, and then the AI did something weird, and then they suddenly lost for some reason uh, in a way I didn't understand. But it's not apparent. Like, you're looking at this. Uh, there's this thing, which uh, that just looks like a view mode to me. It doesn't look like it's going to do anything. But what it's telling you is that this, this piece that you selected can travel in time. Um, and yeah, it's also confusing that when you select one piece, you can't click on another piece, doesn't let you select it. Um, that would make sense if it was possible to take your own pieces, because then it would be ambiguous what you're trying to do, but I don't think that it is, even in time travel. On the same board, you can't select your own pieces. 
Uh, even in time travel, you can't go to where one of your own pieces already is, so I don't know why that doesn't work. Um, but yes, I can try and travel my knight. I'm not going to do that just because they did that, so let's see if we can do a different piece. Uh, I feel like the queen should be able to move back in time. Maybe not. Um, pawns can't. Maybe it's got to be... Can a bishop? No, nope, not yet. I'm actually going to just do a normal move so that in a minute we will be able to send something back in time. Let me do this. Is that going to be bad? Um, I, I'm going to go here. <laughs> uh, and I've got to act on this as well. Once, the, once someone makes a timeline, you're playing on both those boards simultaneously, so you're playing multiple games of chess. Let's just do something that would be conventionally good here, which is sort of threaten this knight. Uh, I think that's fine, yeah. Then once you've done them all, you submit their moves, and they don't move on the latest board, they move on whatever the present one is. And any any that are on the present where it's their turn, they'll move on all of those. They won't keep progressing here. Um, but as you saw, I was able to, even though I wasn't the present, I'm allowed to tr take my next move, and I've just got to wait for them to catch up at some point. Uh, so hopefully now I can move my green back in time. Oh no, because it's not my turn, because he hasn't taken a turn yet. Damn it. We've got to move on this less interesting board. Um, I've got to try and stick to... Oh, yeah, well, why not show this? Okay. There's a second kind of movement in that's not just through time. So this timeline got created when a knight went back in time. They went back to an early state of this board, but because you can't change the past, that created a new timeline. That's traveling in time. They 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 sort of have traveled parallel as well, but um, that's just a, a quirk of the branching. But right now, I can, without traveling in time, I can, chain, I can move this piece from one board to the other. So... This is, um, maybe we want to do it the other way around. Oh, we can't because it's not my turn, I thought. Yeah, so that, that, I've already moved at that time in this timeline. But from this timeline, I can jump to this one. So I'm going to do that. Which is, yeah, a parallel leap. Um, and this concept will, this is different to time travel. So there's going backwards this way. Uh, I, can you go forwards? No, you can't go forwards because you'd never be controlling the past. It's never your turn in the past. It's only ever your turn in the present or the future. Um, so you can go backwards and you can go across ways to a different to a parallel timeline. And by doing that, because uh, I moved to the past of that timeline of this timeline, um, that had to create a branch as well. Because again, you can't change the past. I think if we move the present of one timeline to the other, it doesn't create a branch. I think you can just actually modify it. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, let me see if it will let me move a queen in a second, because that's just one more confusing thing. If you are th thinking about the knight moves and how the knight has been able to move and the way that it's different to how a knight normally moves, um, you may start to get an inkling of how this actually works. But for me, when I try to move a queen, um, it's actually the enemy moving a queen. This is when it got really hard to understand. <laughs> this pattern uh, is strange in a whole bunch of ways. In fact, even with my new understanding, I don't understand my move options here. Um, no, I don't know why I, why I can't move to certain tiles there. But I think it's safe to say at this point, this is confusing, right? <laughs> it is not clear what the move options are. And move options are not just, you know, what you can do, it's what the enemy can do too. And if you don't know what the enemy can do, they can take you at any time. And this is the, you know, training AI with the simplified standard, or sorry, just the standard non-variant thing. And this is what it kind of pushes you to play when you first start. And I think it's basically impossible to understand a game like that. Uh, what I recommend is, if you scroll way down, there's actually some really good variants that are useful for learning. Um, I'm looking for uh, rooks only somewhere. I don't know, I'm telling you that because you can't tell me if you see it. Uh, just rooks. I think this is probably the best place to start. It's actually even this is a bit too complicated because there's a king in it too. Uh, but you kind of need the king just to get the checkmate thing uh, going on. I think I would just start with just rooks and just let you figure out how rooks can take each other in this in this thing. Um, but the rook is just the only piece that's kind of simple to understand in this game. Well, it's the most simple piece to understand, even though it's um, maybe it's the most simple piece in chess as well because it just moves in in four possible directions. And in chess, you'd think about, you know, a rook moves in four different directions, a knight can move in four, sorry, a bishop can move in four different directions, and that's kind of similar. Um, but actually, they're very different in this game because the way you think in this game is in dimensions, and a rook can move in one dimension at a time. Each time it moves, it can only move in one dimension. It can't move left and up. It can't move 
down and up because it doesn't make any sense uh, and it can't move you know uh, we would call it diagonally, but moving diagonally is moving in two dimensions. You move in horizontal and the vertical dimension. You know, there are only two dimensions in chess, just, just up, down, left, right. Um, and that makes it simpler to understand time travel. I can't do any time travel now because uh, we haven't started yet. Um, I actually don't totally know what the best move is here. Um, like, I'm bad at end games in chess, so when there's few pieces, it's, it gets hard to think about. Uh, I'm just going to go here. Um, and submit that move, see what they do. They just did a normal move. Now let's see if I can time travel. So, uh, if I click on this rook, I cannot time travel. There's nowhere I can go. And there's a pretty simple reason for that. This rook has never moved. It's always been here. In every past state, it was on this tile. And when you move in time, let's look at how this rook can move. I can move. I can't move to here. That's actually because it was Black's turn, so you can never move to the enemy turn. You can move to your own previous turn. Um, I can move to there. And that is exactly where I currently am. So I can go back in time and I don't move at all in either of these two dimensions. And that's because I'm moving in this dimension. And a rook only moves in one dimension at a time. So if you're moving in time, you don't move in space. And that's simple universal rule for rooks. That's always how they work. If they're going back in time, they can never move in space. I think if we had parallel timelines, and I'll create one just to see. Um, I might get checkmated before I get to show you what I want to show you. But um, uh, I've now created a parallel one. And we'll forget about this one for a while and we'll just play in this one. I think it's not my turn, so I think I have to submit moves. He's just done a normal move here. We're still not parallel yet. I've got to move and then, then he moves and then we'll be parallel. Um, but this guy can't move back anywhere uh, because he was always there. And, uh, and he can't move. Why can't he move to, to there well, like we did last time? Because that's both in the past and it's a parallel timeline. It's not that this branched off from there. Um, it's not, you can see there isn't a history state here. I hope you can see my cursor, otherwise this is going to be a meaningless video. <laughs> there is no history state there. So to go there, I've got to move in more than one dimension, right? I've got to move back and up. Um, back and across, I'll say, because neither of those dimensions exist in the spatial plane. Um, so that makes sense, right? And this guy can't move because he was always there. This guy can't move because he was always there. He can't go back in time. This guy, actually, he can cross. Okay, so this is, hmm... I wonder if terminology sort of falls down here. No, I suppose that's fair. So he can move, in theory, to this timeline. If I do it, he's not actually going to appear there, is he? Because you can't change the past, and this is the past. So it'll make a new branch. So let's just do it for chaos reasons. Um, can this guy... No. Can... No, okay. I think that's the, that's the wackiest move I can do right now, is to pretend I was over there. I don't think it helps anything, does it? I guess we've got... Now we've got a timeline where we have one rook, a timeline where we have two rooks, and a timeline where we have three rooks. Um, all of which is good. Um, and it's Black's turn in all of them. Um, why didn't he move there? Doesn't he have to move there? Oh, I think there's, there's some kind of rule about how many timelines you can create. Like if I create... Um, if you create two, you can't create a third one but until the enemy creates one. But that doesn't really explain this, does it? I'm white. This is Black's turn. I don't know why he didn't have to take a turn there. Um, maybe we'll find out. Uh, so that is a somewhat scary threat. Um, I guess I could do the same scary threat back to him, but he's a move ahead now, so... Uh, that's not such a good thing. I could do something really fun and escape my king to a different dimension. <laughs> but the one I want to escape it to is here. And now, so the king, you know, this is why I think they should just be rooks at the start. Because what you're seeing with the king now is confusing, right? Because the king can move just like they normally do and back in time. And that to me is inconsistent. That's not how everything else works. Everything else can't move like it normally can because it has to use one of its dimensions of movement to go back in time. In the Rook's case, it only has one, so it has to use all of its movement to go back in time, which means it can't move spatially. Uh, in the case of a bishop, uh, a bishop moves in two dimensions at once, moves horizontally and vertically, always both of them. Um, but in this game, it can use one of those dimensions to move back in time, and if it does that, it looks like it moves like a Rook, because it's only got one spatial dimension left. But for a king, that doesn't seem to apply. It's just, it can move diagonally and back in time all at once, so it's moving in three dimensions. 
So when you move in two dimensions at once, it's called a diagonal. If you move in three dimensions at once, it's called a triagonal. And I think that is why it's a rule in the game. <laughs> I think that's why they did it in this slightly confusing way, where it feels sort of inconsistent. It's just because you get to use the word triagonal and even quadrangle, quad, uh, diagonal, triagonal, quadragonal, quadragonal, I think. Um, that term is written down here somewhere I can check. Um, and of course, that would be going, going diagonally back in time and to a parallel dimension. So actually that, that is a quadrant, qu why can't I say it? Triagonal, quadragonal, quadragonal, quadragonal. It's got the word dragon in it, it should be easy. Um, I mean, I can't do that because I'd die. Uh, <laughs> that would be instant checkmate and I'd lose the game. So <laughs> uh, unfortunately I can't do a quadrangle. Um, or maybe I should and just move on because hopefully this is beginning to make sense. Um, let's do a quadrangle move that, I mean, I guess that explains checkmate. Um, no, actually, there's one more thing I want to show, so I won't do this. Um, you, when you make a move that, that is literally, you know, this is weird, on my move I created checkmate, which you can't do in chess. Um, <laughs> like, I checkmated myself. By, um, because it's so complicated to understand what is checkmate, it, I think this is a very smart decision. They let you see how the king gets taken. They, like, it's not just that the king, you know, is trapped. The king actually gets taken. You have to be able to foresee that. Um, to understand why it's checkmate, and then you just undo it so that it, it didn't happen. Called undo move, which isn't really... Well, in that case it is, but sometimes you just get to click a button to show the checkmate, and that's still called undo move, which is weird. That's another thing. I watched um, Hikaru Nakamura play this game, who's like uh, one of the best chess players in the world, an incredibly smart guy, could not understand it. One of the things he couldn't understand is that it's this submit moves button is disabled if you haven't played on all the boards, and so if you make a move on one of these boards and you don't know that, it looks like the move is invalid. It looks like you can't submit it because it's... A, not a valid move and there's nowhere that tells you you've got like three more boards to move on even now like, i can't just look at this and see what i need to do like it, it is these two but next turn that that thing will be on the present will, it'll be the enemy's turn the present and that won't be true it's just very difficult to kind of i wish it would just summarize here the board you've got to move up um okay so i'm not doing the quad i, I guess i did the quadragonal um and you saw it what I would love to do is, is get my rook to a place where his king previously was, which is a sort of a, a back-in-time checkmate. Uh, I can't actually do that because his king's never moved, so uh, instead I will just uh, try and play well, which I don't totally know how to do. Um, I think connecting your rooks is normally good, and the king can't take because my rook would take him, so... Uh, I guess I'm just doing that. Doesn't seem as good as, as going here, does it? I'll go here. And I've got to act on this one as well. Hmm. This one's easier. Why did he do this? I guess he's a stupid AI. Oh, this is cool. He's he's escaped his king. He's seen he's going to lose this one. Well, actually, no, we're even, so... Um, probably the wrong board to escape on but um, he's run his king back in time so that was I'll try and hopefully I have an equivalent move I could do yeah so if I move to back in time it would create an alternate branch timeline and usually losing usually the piece leaving this current time period is a loss right it's bad you lose it um, you have less stuff but in the case of a king if your king leaves you can't be checkmated so if someone over invests and puts all their cool stuff in one board over the course of many many turns you can escape it all with one turn by just moving your king to a different timeline. Um, that isn't necessarily the slam dunk that it might sound like. Um, and obviously having two kings in the other timeline is tricky, because if any of them get checkmated, you lose the game. Um, but to be honest, this looks pretty strong here. My, I've only got one rook, it's hard to checkmate. Actually, you know, it's much easier to checkmate two kings. If they're in the line and I put my rook there and he can't take the rook, it's over, because there's no move you can make that would not be a king taken. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> on another timeline, I am actually in check. He's moved his rook there. Not as scary as it might otherwise be, because I could just take his rook. Um, I think, I don't know the game well enough to actually speak strategy authoritatively, but it seems to me like if you can just take a free piece in a timeline, it's always worth doing that. You don't need to think about the time shenanigans, unless you're actually setting yourself up for checkmate, of course. I mean, actually, I should think about that, because if his rook was here on the screen square right now, and I did this, his next move could be there. Mm. No, that still doesn't help him. If he could move there un unthreatened, then he gets checkmate in the past because he can jump back. 
Uh, that's what I'm trying to show you, but um, actually, uh, I can do it now because he's he's moved he's moved in time, and so I think if I go here, I think my next move in this timeline will be checkmate unless he does some time shenanigans because uh, he can't take me. I guess he can check me, but then I just take him, and whatever else he does, um, I suppose he could just move this this rook back and forth on this on this row as much as he likes. But if he doesn't, if that rook leaves that row, I can just go here, and then I will be uh, able to capture his king in the past. And he just created a new timeline, right? So that's that helps me because it means it gives me the right to create a new timeline. Now, can I do anything here? This is pretty terrible timeline. I probably next chance I get, I should probably move a rook back from from this one to that one because I'm outnumbered here. Um, unless I can see checkmate in this one. But I think I can't create check safely here. Um, I I can go here safely because I mean not that safely, but his his rook takes I I can take back, um, and that gives me freedom of movement here, and I can possibly attack there. So I think you can agree, like this is not too simple. <laughs> if the game started with this instead of a regular game of chess, I don't think you'd be like, ah, oh, but this is too basic. I wish it would pick up the pace. <laughs> like, just the rook alone has so much to think about, and the king being able to escape over time. I think even that is is a, a wrinkle too far for a first game. Um, I think a it needs a step by step tutorial to show you some funny tactics, and then b this should be the game, but with no kings at first, and just you have two rooks, they have two rooks, see who can win. Um, and then introduce the king and checkmate, and this this idea of being checkmated in any timeline is bad. So he's moved. No, I'm a little confused now. What just happened? Oh no, he's he's done the perfect thing um, for me. Uh, let me see. So I've got checkmate here. I'm pretty sure because I could just move here. Uh, I'll just do it because I won't submit it yet. Now there's nothing he can do, right? He if he moves this king, I'm still threatening that king, and if you can take a king, that's the end of the game. So I think I've won. Um, let's just see what the other timelines have. I wanted... Uh, this is the one... Let's see. It's not my turn yet in this one. I'm not totally sure. I see that it's further along than the others. But didn't I just move there? Anyway, I don't understand quite the logic of which ones he moves on and which ones he doesn't. Um, this one is sort of opening up the way for, for checkmate potentially because I, if I can get a rook there, um, I win. And I might want to put my rook here so that he can't jump to where my king was and get checkmate that way. Uh, I would take him in return. I would take him before he can do it. Um, it is, of course, offering me the chance to just jump to a different timeline. I was saying I wanted to both. This is actually the timeline I was worried about, and this, this is the one I got checkmate in because he's just a fool. Um, but let me see. So when I when I checkmate him, it doesn't show me yet that I've done that. So you do have to think about it. It's not going to be you win. You've got to submit your move first, which I think is fair enough. Like it, it should be a challenge to figure out how to get checkmate. It shouldn't be a challenge to understand checkmate once it's happened. Um, oh, actually, what's happening in this timeline is great. Uh, think I want to keep up the pressure by I won't move away from his king and I'll just take his rook because he's giving that to me for free for some reason um, and then here nothing worrying is happening here is it um, I it's a little bit awkward but maybe I think maybe like these two rows are the best ones to have your rooks on so, so they can move freely left and right and support each other because um, I can't move to any of these squ to this square, yeah, any of these squares because they're all threatened by the king or the rook. Um, I could move up actually. Fuck okay, it, yeah, let's do that. That's perfect. That's pinning the rook. The rook can't move now. He basically has to take me there, um, or I will take next turn. And if he does that, I just take him with this. So actually, I'm just sort of winning regular chess there. So let's see if I'm right that, he, that I've got checkmate here. Oh, he's. <clears throat> See, this just feels like stalling, doesn't it? Like, this is checkmate, I'm pretty sure. But he, now he's now created a new branch back here. And the reason that, you know, it, it still isn't game over, um, or it isn't game over yet, is that, in theory, he could do something on this timeline to jump into there. 
I actually, if I understand it correctly, he can't now though, can he? Because his next turn, it's already happened. Like, I already have checkmate. If on his next turn, he jumps into this timeline. I suppose that's the present of that timeline, so it isn't the past, so it can be changed. So he could, I do something here, and then he jumps from that timeline to this one to take that rook. That's the only thing I can see. Um, he can't do it, well, he could do it from her there. Uh, let me let me think. <laughs> what is what does this mean? This board, that black border, means it's his turn. It means there's a turn he hasn't taken yet. He he has the power to take a turn on that board, and at some point he will have to, um, because it doesn't mean that he's going to take a turn on that board. I mean, it might in this situation, but like some of these have had a black border for a while and he hasn't taken a turn. Um, and like I don't have to move on this one. Um, uh, so actually, maybe this is interesting. I mean, I think I have, I certainly have check here. Oh no, it's his move, he hasn't done it yet. Oh, that's annoying. I wish he'd like, just get to parity. Just get to the point where it's my turn on everything, please. <laughs> um, I guess when you're playing against another human, maybe it's clearer why the present needs to work this way. Um, because perhaps there's a way to sort of, you know, you'd be forcing your opponent to, to miss opportunities to do time stuff, I don't know. So let me just understand what he just did. He acted on this board, and what he did was he jumped his king back in time, and diagonally, I might add, so that's a, a triagonal move. No, it's a quadragonal move. Yeah, debatable, actually. I mean, visually it is, because he went back and up. But then, as I said earlier, when you do this, you're going, only going back, but you end up both back and across, don't you? Um, so, arguably a quadragonal move. <laughs> um, and he did because he didn't end up there; he ended up here. And if you measure it by where they ended up, then this ought to count as a as moving in more dimensions than this rook possibly could have. Um, but anyway, the rule is kings and queens are just allowed to move in as many dimensions as they want, no matter what. Um, which I think is silly, but and makes the game harder to learn, but that is the rule. And so, he... There's something confusing about it, which is... Uh, what is it? So... Yeah, so even with time shenanigans from this timeline, what I'm wondering is why didn't he act on the timeline that's actually in trouble? Or to the timeline that's in trouble? And I suppose that the two answers are, he can't do anything with time shenanigans to get out of this. It's not going to save him. It, it, moves a king to another timeline, doesn't matter, that other king is there, the whole point of this this double king pin, oh it's a king pin, <laughs> um, is that there, even if you could completely teleport another king away, you still lose the game, uh, no matter which one of them you do, you just next turn like, hit him with a rook. The only way this doesn't end the game is if something else teleports in from another timeline and takes my rook, and I think it has to just take the rook, I don't think it can't teleport in and threaten my rook or anything, there isn't time for that, it has to take it right now. So. If it was just rooks, I would only have to worry about rooks on that square in other dimensions, which of which there are none. So I would be completely safe. But I can't make that assumption entirely because there's kings, and kings, like I say, get infinite dimensions to move in, which means they can move in any direction and across. That said, in this timeline, I don't think you can get from here to there and take my king, right? This king, if it was me, uh, I can't see its move options, I suppose, but, uh, well, it is me. Uh, I have a king. So I can move one square in any direction and to any timeline. Now, why can't, oh God. <laughs> now, this is confusing. What, why am I allowed to move to that timeline, but I'm not allowed to move to this timeline? What's the difference? I get this one, this is just moving across. I. Maybe at a stretch, I, I could say maybe I can't move to the back, the history of this timeline because I branched off from there. I don't believe that though. I think. No, uh, then my next theory was maybe it's because I've run out of branches to create, and that means that I, um, you know, can't make a move that would branch again. But that's not true because going here would branch because you can't change the past. When you arrive in the past, you always branch. So why the hell can I go to this one but not any of the others? It's not move options because the king's in the same place in this one as well as those, the, the, all the spatial options are the same. And it's not dimensions because as explained, the king can move as many dimensions as you like and this also this one is back in time and across so it's already a quadragonal. 
I truly don't know why I can only move to that one timeline. It's not to do with whose turn it is, because it's his turn in both of these. It's not to do with how far extended they are, because those are both extended equally. I guess that's more of an academic <laughs> musing. Um, but yes, I, I was just looking on my king to show that uh, you know you can't jump more than one space spatially. So I don't think he can use his king to take my rook. Actually, he never could. He could never take it with a king, because my king would take him. Um, so I think it's checkmate. So I think all I need to do is just move on this board that he just created. Um, and there's no great, I can't, I can't get check safely, I don't think. I think I just could move back here with the hope of doing basically the same thing I did here, but one turn later. But don't think it'll matter because I think he's checkmated. Uh, he's doing some more fruity stuff there. Oh, he's, he's, I think he is just stalling. He's just, keep creating new timelines. He's got three kings of this one now. I mean, this isn't going to help you, mate. Three kings in a row. If you didn't, it seems like you didn't learn the lesson from this one. <laughs> like having two kings in a row is checkmate. Uh, it's going to continue to be, and he should at least be moving his king. He moved it to this. He moved it right. He moved it quadrangularly, so back in time and across dimensions, but also one square to the right, which doesn't fucking help him. If he'd moved it to that, the square below that, then that actually threatens my rook, and I think he maybe could have saved himself. But instead, he's just created a, another checkmate opportunity. And again, it's my turn on these, but I don't have to move on them. Um, Maybe I will, just for fun. Uh, I'll threaten that rook. And on this one, um, I'll just throw and check. I don't, there's probably no advantage to ever doing that. You prob oh, except, okay, I think there's no advantage on moving on any time, on any turn that's ahead of the present, unless you're going to use it to go back in time. Um, I think if you're not going to do that, you might as well wait and see what he does, because yeah, I wouldn't swear to that, but I think that's the right. Okay, double checkmate. Okay, he <laughs> came in with white wins. It's a bit anticlimactic, isn't it? Because what you really want to see is this. Uh, the Lex Glam does show, yeah, I can just take you now. I mean, he doesn't try and do anything. I think it would be even more illustrative if he should, like sort of tried to move, and then you saw why it doesn't work. You know, if he tries to move one of these out of the way, you'd see I just get the other one. Um, but yeah, everything I said about checkmate there was true. Um, it would have been interesting if he had a way of getting back. He did have a way. I think he could have done it. I think he could have, if instead of moving right, he had moved down, he could have then jumped from there to take my, oh no, as, as established, my king protects my rook, so actually he couldn't have done it. Um, yeah, so that is basically 5D chess. I'll quickly show you what um, bishops look like, and then the rest I don't think it's worth getting into. Like knights, maybe I'll do knights real quick. Be, but um, I won't play this whole game. I just want to show you what, what it looks like to move them. Um, this seems like a nice straightforward move. Just put him in check right away. So he's got to move, move his bishop or his king. I suppose we've all got to move our bishops or our kings. Um, and then shall I just go back in time right away? Oh yeah, this is what I'm trying to show. There's two things to notice here actually. Uh, bishop normally moves diagonally, which as I say is moving in two dimensions at once, up the horizontal and the, the vertical dimension. If they move back in time, they're using one of their dimensions that they can move in to go back in time. And therefore they only have one spatial dimension left to move in. And so he, I could move left, right, up, down, but this is the only free square, so this is the only one available to me. And the other thing to notice is I can only move one square in that direction, right? Do you know where that is? That is because a bishop moves in both dimensions by one at a time. So yes, you can move as far as you like in spatial dimensions, um, but if you're moving three left, you've got to move three up or down. Um, there can't be a mismatch. You can't move one along and two up like a knight. Um, and so since one of our dimensions is time, we can only move one time unit back. I know it looks like three boards, but um, you don't you ignore the, the enemy's turn because you can't jump to that. And I, this is fair enough. It's a little bit weird. I think they should have shown it differently. I think they should have joined these two boards together in some way to show that that's one turn. This isn't two turns. This is one turn. Because um, in my game um, that I've been tinkering with, I've had to do that as well and just say, like, it's not my turn, then your turn. It's turn one for me and turn one for you. It's all turn one. I get to act, then you get to act. That's a turn. Because uh, otherwise the language gets really confusing. So there's a, if I go back here, I'm only jumping one turn, which means I can only jump one in space as well. Um, like, 
in the same way if I want to go to um, the left edge of the screen. Actually, let's, let's select this one. This one can only go uh, one square to the left, right? That's the furthest they can go to left, which means they can also only go one square up because they've hit the edge. They, In order to go up a square further up, they would have to go a further square further left, and there is no room to do that. Exactly the same thing is happening here. They can't go any further away in any direction because they can only go one square back in time. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, so bishops, are like, immediately, this is twice as complicated as rooks. It's so much more complex. And trying to understand, like, this for every piece on a chessboard simultaneously is just madness. <laughs> I don't know why. If they can't be bothered to make a tutorial, then at least, like, start you in rooks-only mode and just, just, like, even just having the guide text that they have in the game just be on a left panel here, like, somewhere along here, while you play a simple game with rooks, just, like, two rooks on a, on a 4 by 4 board, uh, no kings, and just, like, let you sort of let that sink in and then move on to bishops. Um, that would be tricky enough. But actually, like, pawns are more complicated than bishops because uh, whether a pawn moves in one dimension or two depends on whether they can capture or not. And whether they can capture or not depends on whether there's a piece there. And if you're moving back in time, whether there's a piece there in, in history is going to affect whether you can move there. Um, in my first game, I got my queen captured by a pawn in a way I did not understand at all. <laughs> um, so what, what would I want to do here? Um, I can go back in time with this guy. He's got lots of move options. Uh, none of these check the king, which would be my first choice. Um, but it does kind of seem like three bishops is going to get to checkmate pretty fast, isn't it? Let's see. Keep them nice and far away, uh, I think. Okay. So actually, yeah, he's only acted on this one. So that's another thing. If you're going far enough back in the past, with the hopes of getting checkmate with your extra pieces, you've got a little while to do it because as long as it happens, you know, before we get to this timeline, it doesn't matter how outnumbered I am here because he doesn't get to act there. Um, yeah, two bishops of the same color is really useful because they can protect each other. And but of course they're not actually the um, the color that I want. I think I could do this. I'm threatening his and mine is defended. His is also defended, but. Um, there isn't a way to move this bishop so that it's protected by that one. So I think I want to do that. It's not like a great move, but it's sort of potentially interesting. I actually, I kind of, f oh, <laughs> okay. I was going to say I fucked up because I should have brought a light square bishop back. I did bring a light square bishop back, but it didn't end up as a light square bishop, did it? Because when it moves back in time, it can only move in one dimension, and by moving one square in one dimension, you end up on a different color of square, so the light square bishop becomes a dark square bishop. In normal chess, you get used to talking about them as if they're different species, basically, because a dark square bishop can never get off the dark squares, and a light square bishop can never get off the light squares. Uh, but here, they can actually change. So I should have moved a dark square bishop so that I got an extra light square bishop because his king's on a light square. <laughs> Uh, okay, he's in a corner there now. This actually, I mean, I can check him again. Uh, I feel like I'm never going to checkmate with one bishop and a king when he has two bishops. Um, my best hope is that he sort of blunders a bishop somehow. Um, he has taken my bishop here. That's more promising because then we a two on one is better than a three on two. So I think I just take that. I don't know any time shenanigans there. Um, I wonder though, would it be worth me? No, I think I need this bishop to defend this king. If it was way ahead of the t present, I might not be worried about it, and I might be able to send a piece further back. I suppose by going back in time, I move the present back, right? So if I go all the way back to turn one, does that help me? Let's try it. I said I wouldn't play this whole thing through, but it's quite quite, quite interesting now. <laughs> Actually, I've got to check the time because I. Okay, yeah, I do have to wrap this up soon. Um, okay, three bishops very far back. The present hasn't moved. Why is that? Usually the present moves back in time to the first branch, doesn't it? Oh, he's taken me in the past now. Okay, so the present has moved back. It seems like when he goes back in time, it moves, and when I go back in time, it doesn't. Um, this Is this telling me it's checkmate? Oh, the whole thing's over. Mm. <laughs> Okay, oh my god, I do see what's happened here. That is fucking... 
ahead breaking. Okay, do you remember what I said about if a bishop's like right on the edge and you can only move one square left, that means you can only move one square up, and that's that was why I could only move one square back in time. Sorry, that's why I could only move one square spatially when going back in time, because back then I only had one time unit to play with. Uh, now apply that to dimensions. This is, doesn't travel in time at all. Um, but the same thing is true in dimensions. If, if uh, Can I see a move? Am I allowed to just use one of my pieces? Probably not. Oh yeah, I can. Um, so if I travel in dimensions across ways, um, the same thing applies, right? I, because I'm moving, if I only move one dimension across, I can only move one dimension spatial, one square spatially. If I move two dimensions across, I can actually move two squares, like a rook, because I'm going to move one dimension, um, I can move up or down. Uh, explain to me why I can't go here. I would think that would just be a capture, wouldn't it? If I can move to a place where an enemy, you know, it's happy with to me, for me to move hit left or right. I think I normally would be able to do that. Maybe I can't because I'm in checkmate and it's, the game is over. Because sometimes, it, like, I can't click on any of these, I don't think. Oh, no, I can. Um, it's confusing. Sometimes you can't interact after the thing is over. Maybe that's in puzzle mode. But anyway, that's what he did. Because he's moving two dimensions across, he can also move two dimensions spatially, which lets him land where my king is. So you're watching bishops, like, in the present, they, they can move diagonally. And then across dimensions, they can move like a rook. Which is just a fucking nightmare. I think they could have stopped there. I think it could have just been bishops and rooks and just scrap the other pieces. You don't need the rest of chess. This is already too much complexity. Or it's an exciting amount of complexity. Um, and it's certainly not too little. It's certainly plenty to chew on there. Just with just with all the contortions that the concept of checkmate has gone through. Um, is absolutely nuts. I'm not going to show you the bishop, uh, the knight. I don't have time, um, but it's the same principle. It's just that it moves two in one dimension and one in another dimension, which of course means it could do things like move one space spatially and jump two back in time, or it could move two spaces spatially and jump one back in time, or it could move two dimensions across <laughs> and then one back in time and stay where it is because it has no other dimensions to spend on, on spatial movement. Um, or it could move uh, like ones, uh, one across and two spatially. Uh, so the, the range of possibilities there is like, it's not just um, a lot of them. It's that they're not intuitable to me. <laughs> like they're just, because it's asymmetrical, because it's one in one dimension, and one in the other. Like you saw how fucking complicated it got with bishops. I, like I didn't see this at all. Even if I had the mental bandwidth to sort of track four boards at once, which I don't really. Um, I don't think I would have spotted it because I'd forgotten that they could move more than one place, to be honest, even though I gave you that explanation of why that the fact that it couldn't move more than one place was unique to that situation because we can't go any further back in time. I then just forgot about that and, and the idea that it could jump. I think I also hadn't internalized, like to me, jumping a timeline is the same no matter which timeline you jump to, you know, sort of logically. If I was designing this game and just in my head and then written them down, it would make sense to me that jumping a timeline is always one space because it's just another timeline like how the concept of timelines being far apart from each other <laughs> is kind of weird but that's the virtue of this presentation isn't it like that's why they lay it out in a grid like this where everything's spaced out very evenly is so that you get that this is a, a jump of two it's jumping two timelines therefore it's also allowed to move two spaces i wonder if that's related to why they keep the white and black boards separate like i was saying they should join them together I don't think it is. I think it actually would make even more sense if they were joined together because here, this is a gap of two, but it's the same distance as this, which is a gap of one. That is a, a jump of one square. And the, counting those squares is really important to this game. So I, I think they should have just joined these boards. I don't see why they didn't. But anyway, that's the game. I think it's really cool. I wish that the queen, kings and queens did not um, move in infinite dimensions. I wish they should have. They could have just stuck to um, to that. Uh, to, to two dimensions and you just got to pick which two. I mean, one or two, because kings and queens can both choose to move in only one dimension. Um, which is, you know, different again to the bishop. Like, the bishop actually can't capture on the same square that it's in in the past, because it has to move. If it's going to move in time, it has to move in space as well. Whereas the rook is allowed to just move in time, and the king can also move just in time, or just in dimensions, or uh, just in, yeah, just across dimensions. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, one more fucking thing. How is this 5D? I just talked you through all the dimensions in great depth 
There are four of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there are four. Chess has two dimensions. Then you add on time, and then you add on possibility. You can just like see it visually in the thing. There's there's in the chessboard. There's these two ways to go. And then when you start making new timelines and shit, which I can't really do right now, um, you end up with what happened there? Didn't I move already? Oh, am I playing a real person? I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to create a new timeline so I can just show that when you have this, like this is two dimensions. There's there's time going left and right, and there's dimensions going. Well, you know, whatever you want to call it, timelines going up and down. That's two more dimensions. You started with two, you added two, you've got four dimensions. It's not 5D. I'm going to ask for a refund. 